So we're here today at Duck Island Partners near Keith in the southeast of South Australia with James Darling, the owner, and Stuart Ravaz, the manager, looking at the use of EID to make management decisions outside of the use of EID for regulation purposes. Being able to identify individual animals in your herd, ones that are making the most money and ones that are making the least money, can help you make cull decisions and improve the overall profitability of your herd. So we were one of the first people to uh take up electronic tags when they became available, probably before that became mandatory. And they were always a guarantee for us. Every time animals went over the scales, which was every time they went down the race, those uh, EIDs would record the animal, they would give us a weight, and they would be entirely accurate you could rely on them, rather than trying to read management tags, which might have be covered in hair, or cow poo, or fading, might have come out. So having two tags in an animal is always helpful. It's hardly ever that we've experienced losing both tags at the same time. Basically what I'm using here is a Gallagher TSI for, with their basically their software um, to be able to weigh the animals and import all the information I suppose um, and just with a panel reader on the side. So the electronic tag gets put in at about oh, probably three months, three months of age. Um, when we carve everything gets a management tag straight at basically birth and then they come in not long after that, once everything's finished carving, um, get a uh, EID after that. The machine is very good, um, but it's only as good as the information that I download onto it. So the information, as I said, you can track their percentages, you can draft them on percentage, you can draft them on weight, um, and yeah, really it comes down to um, the information that I've put on there. So basically this gives their life data that I've entered into the computer. So it tells you the date of birth of this cow, whose its mother is, whose its father is, what percentage breakup it is. So this animal here is 50% 50, 50 Angus, 35% Simmental and 14% Hereford. And then it's, it's a black composite, which is black with a little bit of white on its face. Um, it's empty weight at that stage was 485 kilos and so on basically so that just gives you a rundown of its history or what's what is basically all that information I've had to put on from the farm computer and at, at the same time as what I'm doing is the machine here is I'm entering in the its batch number and its date of when it was drenched so I've got a record then of basically its treatments for its, for its life as I weigh them and drench them if we'd normally would draft them in the round yard, so if we're having to do it in the round yard, we're having an extra person to be able to deal with it. This way we can just feed them through the race, draft them left, right, depending on where they are with drenches and what have you. But really once I've done, worked in the yards, I'll take this information back to the computer in the office. I can then work out um, ages, weights at uh, weaning time. Animals that might not be really doing as well as they should be, I'll take those lighter weight ones off and leave the heavier weights. When a herd goes over the scales, Stuart will take that recorder to his office. He will download everything onto our computer file, which is Stockbooks. It's a, a computer system that deals very well with crossbreeding and composite breeding, which is essential for us. And then that can be used in, what, in whatever way we consider best. In a herd, if there are one or two non-performing animals, and we can see it, and the NLR tag makes that very clear, then we take them off. And we have a cull herd, and we're always running a cull herd. You know, we sold a cull truck last week. My cows in the market sold for over $1,700. What's the cost of an EID in comparison with that? Trivial. It's unthinkable for us to be able to run our operation without EIDs. While Stuck Island are using quite a sophisticated system within their yards, 
a smaller producer doesn't necessarily have to have such a sophisticated system. And you could capture data using a wand and a basic Excel spreadsheet and still make some really good decisions. I'd like to thank James Darling and Stuart Ravaz for their time today and allowing us to film their cattle whilst they're undertaking um, some cattle work here with the EID and seeing that in action today.